this is a molecule is an ensemble of point charges surrounded by a cloud of negative charges. In the ground state, nuclei and electrons are in equilibrium. But then a photon can change that situation. Nuclei and electrons are not in equilibrium anymore. You have a instantaneous modification of electronic cloud that reacts to the photon. And then the nuclei change in response to this change in electrons. And the electrons change the response to the nuclei, nuclei, and you have this feedback loop between the two subsystems. You know how to model this system. You know how to model this process. That's a time-dependent Schrodinger equation. But the problem is you just can't solve it. You take adenine, small molecule, 15 nuclei, 70 electrons. 249 degrees of freedom if you consider all nuclei, all particles in the system. If you just make a grid with ten, a few points per grid, that would be 10 to 500 points to describe the molecular wave function. That's ridiculous. So, how can you simulate such a process? I'm Mario Barbati, professor of uh, chemistry at Ex Marseille University. And today, in this stay at home, I would like to talk about the advanced perspectives on mixed quantum classical dynamics. It'll be, it will be a sequence of three videos. That's the first one, where we're going to discuss how can you simulate excited state molecular dynamics. So let's go. First of all, we're going to be assuming the validity of the born oppenheimer approximation everywhere throughout the talk and throughout all the simulations that I'm going to show. And that means that you are going to separate uh, the two subsystems, the electron and the nuclei, and treat them separately and inter make recovery in the interaction afterwards. And photochemical and photophysical phenomena in molecules involve the time evolution of the nuclear wave packet through a manifold of electronic states. And modeling this process requires considering the coupling between the nuclear and electronic motions if you want to stay and go to the non-diabatic regime. There are many ways of doing that. Starting from the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, you can expand the, the molecular wave function in bohr huang way and get a method like MCTGH that, that in the limit is uh, the non-relativistic limit will be correct method of the exact solution. And then if you use uh, parameterized Gaussian wave packets, you can have the VMCG. And if you impose saddle point approximation and classical trajectories, you're going to have the multiple spawning. You can follow a different way. You can go through that factorization and get a different expansion for the molecular wave function. And then, if we uh, do trajectories with quantum forces, you have a method like the CTMQC. And if you neglect the quantum forces, you have the classical and fast dynamics. You can look at this problem from a different point, a third point of view. From the, from the densities and look at the quantum Liouville equations and through a partial Wigner transformation get the QC Liouville and with some modification of the electronic densities and imposing the pendant trajectories have surface hopping, the very well known surface hopping, which in some way is connected to the RFS dynamics. And they show this map here that's quite arbitrary, you can draw, draw, uh, draw this map in many different ways because I want to highlight this set of methods here for multiple spawning, CTMQC, and fast surface hopping, QC level. All those methods have something in common. They have uh, classical trajectories guiding the molecule and quantum algorithm recovering the non-diabatic uh, information. These methods form a class of methods called non-diabatic mixed in quantum classical dynamics. In the non diabatic mixed quantum di classical dynamics, the system, the molecule, the ensemble, the assembly, the solids, 
uh, the system is split in two subsystems, the slow and fast particles. The slow particles, usually they are in the nuclei, are treated, treated via classical trajectories, and the fast particles, usually the electrons, are treated by uh, quantum mechanics. And the non adiabatic algorithm ensures the self consistence between both subsystems, exchange information between them. Mixed quantum classical dynamics, uh, it doesn't need pre computed uh, potential energy surfaces or even building modern Hamiltonians. Naturally, you can use them, but they are not really a requirement because the electronic quantities are computed on the fly only at a classical nuclear geometry. And this was a paradigm shift in the middle 90s when people realized it and it became computationally feasible to do this kind of classical on the fly uh, dynamics. That was something probably introduced by uh, Rob Olivucci in 1995 and followed by Martinez and Levine in 1996. Then there's a big sum summary. You have the exact wave packed propagation between electronic states within the Bohr Perham approximation. And in mixed quantum classical dynamics, you can emulate this process through. Uh, averaging, averaging surfaces like in RFS or in CT and QC dynamics. You can recover the non adiabatic effect also by spawning new trajectories every time that our system goes uh, into a, uh, the region of non adiabatic couplings. Or you can hop the trajectories between surfaces. And for the matter of this talk here, I will focus on the third one, on the surface hopping. The core idea is to propagate the nuclei in, with classical trajectories, as in every other mixed quantum classical dynamics method, but on a single potential energy surface. And to allow the trajectory to change the potential energy surface via stochastic algorithm. We compute hop probabilities between uh, by solving electronic problem quantum mechanically. And the most well-known uh, uh, algorithm for surface hopping is the few SOH surface hopping introduced by John Tully in the 90s, where you have the Newton equations for the nuclei. You have a set of equations for the electrons, that's a local version of the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. You can see that in this equation we have uh, part of couplings between uh, the electronic states that give the non adiabatic couplings, not necessarily non adiabatic coupling vector, sometimes the time dependent coupling between, uh, between the wave functions. And then you have the stochastic algorithm that computes the transition probability between the surfaces, and for these transition probabilities, you are using here the, the non-abatic coupling. That's here. And the probabilities, a random number is used to select uh, what's going to happen to the trajectory in the next steps. Look at this example, it's a quite old simulation I did many years ago with Hans Lischke. They were looking at the dynamics of the, uh, adenine, 9H adenine. And what you saw there was the following. Adenine starts in excited states in the green first excited state right now and moving toward the conic intersection. And look here, we're going to stop the dynamics near the intersection where the adenine crosses to the ground state with this carbon, the carbon 2, just moving out of plane. And then adenine is in a hot ground state. With surface hopping, 
it isn't enough to do one single trajectory because that won't be enough statistical information. I have to repeat this over and over again with hundreds of trajectories to get the information done to emulate the wave packet propagation. A method like the coherence corrected surface, uh, fewer switch surface hopping works well with the if, if the light pulse is shorter than the excited state dynamics, if the nuclei move fast, and if there's no significant recoherence between nuclear wave packets. You can read about this things in this nice paper by Subotonik and his uh, co-workers. And but this is a conclusion that many other groups are have been uh, reaching uh, simultaneously. You can find information about that in all these papers here. We have been developing for many years our own platform for surface hopping and non mixed mixed quantum uh, classical dynamics. It's a Newton X program that's in a Newtonian dynamic close to the X scene, to the crossing scene, and is a program for surface hopping nuclear ensemble spectrum simulations. It's a freeware and open source that can download from newtonx.org. The first paper of Newton X was published in 2007, so it's already a program that's in the market for a long while. And in the latest version, you can do surface hopping with many different electronic structure methods from very high level MERCI, including MM environment, to low level DFT, uh, time dependent DFTB, time binding. And in between, you have many other flavors of Kaiser CF, MSSF, CC2, ADC2, TDDFT, and so on. You can also use your favorite program like Columbus or Big or, or Games or Gaussian, it, it's a many interfaces when you can use to do the dynamics and the spectrum. The Newton X program has been a collaborative work, a teamwork of uh, many people. The core developers are myself and Rachel Crespotero, Yuri Pitna, Matias Lukembao, Felix Plaza, Hans Lischke, Giovanni Granucci, and Mauricio Persico. Right now, we have a big team of uh, uh, developers in, in Marseille, including uh, Carlos, Fabius, Pratik, Pratik, Saikat, Max, and Batiste. You have external developers who de uh, have developed a specific uh, algorithm for, for, for Newton X, and there are some of them still working on this algorithm. And you have many uh, contributors to the program. And I like to think of Newton X as an open platform for development. If you have your own idea of an algorithm, if you implement your own method, you can use Newton X as a platform to uh, test and distribute your method. You don't need to worry about all these things of uh, implementing the, the, the basic infrastructure because it's here. You have just to put your method there and take care of the rest. That's, for instance, what happened when um, Shazak implemented the Kais PT2 dynamics of Bagel. He just used Newton X as a basis for that. You may wonder, what can you do in terms of dynamics? On the one hand, you can do a small molecule like cyclohexadiene, only 14 atoms, three electronic states, 100 trajectories, and maybe half a picosecond per trajectory. But you can do this at a very high level at XMS, CASPT2. This is one limit, a small molecule with a high level. On the other hand, you can do a big molecule like cycloparaphenylene, 100 atoms, seven electronic states, three picoseconds per trajectory. But in this case, you have to degrade the method and you use something like a linear response time dependent DFTB. That's the other limit. And then it comes the question, how much does no one there but mixed quantum classical dynamic cost. And I'm going to answer this question in the next part.